Hello, and welcome to the Orthopedic Sports Medicine Patient Educational Series with Dr. Adam Jaraki. This video, we will discuss the post-operative rehabilitation protocols for your rotator cuff repair. The reason that rotator cuff repairs are so famous is because of the rehab. The rehab is tough, the rehab is long, and the rehab really is a life-altering situation. On the day of your procedure, an anesthesiologist will perform a peripheral nerve block on the shoulder. This is going to help out later on after the surgery with pain and symptoms once you go home. Even if your nerve block is working very well, I encourage patients to take their post-operative pain medication one pill every four hours as soon as they get home regardless of how much pain they're in. That way, once the nerve block wears off, you already have the pain medicine in your system. I usually recommend that patients ask the recovery room nurse when their last dose of pain medication was, and then they can start taking it four hours after that. This includes waking patients up every four hours overnight to give them a pain medication. Oftentimes, the nerve block can wear off in the middle of the night. And if you have not taken a pain medicine all night, then the pain can come in a wave. Once the numbing medication of your nerve block wears off, I expect that your pain will go up. If at that time, one pill every four hours isn't cutting it, you can increase the pain medication to a maximum dose of two pills every four hours during the first night following your procedure. I recommend you start with one pill, however, and only go to two pills if you think it is necessary. We will also give you a post-operative prescription for an anti-nausea medication called Zofran. Zofran is for the post-operative complications of nausea associated with the anesthetic. If you know you have a history of nausea following anesthesia, then I would highly recommend that you get the prescription filled and have it available at your house just in case. For patients that have had experience with surgery in the past and have not necessarily had a side effect of nausea, you may just keep the prescription at the pharmacy and pick it up only if you require it. On post-operative day number one, you will come back to my office. We will take all the big dressing down off of your shoulder and go to just a couple of band-aids on the poke holes. If you can pick up some waterproof band-aids for the poke holes, you can begin showering immediately. The band-aids do not need to be large. They can be just a regular size, I skin my knee band-aid. They usually say on the front of the package, waterproof. If you're unsure, ask the pharmacist. We will be placing you in your sling immediately following your procedure. For the first night following the procedure, I recommend that patients don't mess too much with their sling. The following day in the office, we will go over the sling in terms of how to adjust it, how to take it off and on, how to shower, and how to dress. If you would like specifics on the management of your post-operative sling, please refer to my video regarding the post-operative sling following a rotator cuff repair. Post-operatively, because the only thing holding that rotator cuff tendon against the bone are my little stitches, I don't want the little stitches to pull through the tendon, otherwise we end up right back where we started from. And so because of that, we need to protect the repair. After the surgery, your arm goes into a sling with virtually no use of that shoulder for the first four weeks while that tendon is healing to the bone. We do have you come out of the sling to do some basic elbow range of motion exercises as well as finger and wrist exercises and these will be demonstrated to you. At two weeks you come back to the office to remove the sutures and to look at your wounds. At that time we often teach you some passive pendulum exercises which is to help free up the rotator cuff and mitigate some of the stiffness that's going to occur. Two weeks post-operatively, you usually are seen in the office by my nurse practitioner, Mary Beth Decker, who will go over these exercises with you. You can also refer to my video on rotator cuff repair post-operative exercises. At one month post-op, you return to the office for removal of the sling. 
After removal of the sling is when we start informal outpatient physical therapy. And the first month of therapy is all about passive stretching only. We do not allow any active elevation of the arm at that time. Passive range of motion means that you're going to work with your physical therapist and on your own to do passive stretching of the arm. This means that someone or something else is lifting up the arm for you. My goal for patients at two months post-op is for them to achieve full passive elevation and rotation of the arm equal to their other side. Active range of motion is when you are lifting your arm independently by yourself. We do not want active range of motion of the shoulder within the first month out of the sling as this would pull directly on your rotator cuff repair. And at only four weeks post-op, the repair is not ready for that sort of tension. At two months post-operatively, we start active range of motion exercises. Active range of motion exercises mean that we are going to allow you to start lifting your arm independently on your own. When performing active range of motion exercises though, we aren't putting anything in the hand yet. So we're not lifting any weights, we're not doing any resistance bands, and we're not lifting anything around the house. So even though you are lifting the weight of your own arm, you aren't lifting anything with the arm just yet. My goal for patients at three months post-op is for them to be able to perform full, active, independent range of motion of their shoulder in all directions equal to their other side. At three months post-op, we begin strengthening exercises. At this point, we actually start putting weights and rubber bands into your hand to strengthen the muscles of the rotator cuff. Whereas with passive stretching exercises, we really want patients working on those on a daily basis, strengthening exercises cannot be done more than every other day. The shoulder requires some time to rest in between active range of motion exercises. Patients in an attempt to try to speed up the process sometimes end up doing too much strengthening. This leads to chronic irritation and inflammation in the rotator cuff that can lead to a setback. It is not until six months postoperatively do I let you go back to full, unrestricted lifting with the arm. Thank you for taking a little extra time to learn about the postoperative rehabilitation program following a rotator cuff repair. Even though the process can be long and arduous at times, rest assured that you have the full support of the Quincy Medical Group Department of Orthopedics, as well as your physical therapist. Together, we can help to make sure that your journey is a successful one. Have a great day.